Here's Gauze with a steal at midcourt. Going the other way for the left-hand finish. For the past four years, Shalik's Paul Goss has amazed onlookers and set the standards in South Jersey in two of the highest profile sports in the scholastic world, football and basketball. In some aspects, it's tough to coach because I know some people will watch us and think, oh, he's just letting them do whatever. And you just constantly feel Paul's going to make that play. Uh, like I said, you're never out of it. And, and he's just taking our breath away, you know, in both football on the field and basketball. He keeps you in every situation you are, whether it's football against Paulsboro or basketball against Atlantic City, it doesn't matter who we play, with Pauls on the field or on the court, you have an opportunity to win. He just, like I said, he just amazes you. On the gridiron, Paul set South Jersey scoring records for touchdowns with 39 and points scored with 236, while leading Shalik to an undefeated season capped with a state title. But even more impressive than the touchdowns, over Paul's career, he was never caught from behind. Yeah, that was kind of my personal goal, you know what I mean? Coaches was just like, always, they never let you forget that, you know what I mean? Like after your junior year, like, yeah, no one never caught you from behind, so don't let it happen again this year. So I kind of said that kind of personal, and I was like, there's no one that's ever going to catch you from behind. I don't care whether I'm tired or not, cramping up, there's no one that's ever going to catch you from behind. And I lived up to it. Goss was also a force defensively, grabbing 12 interceptions, something Coach feels he didn't get enough credit for. Some of the Gloucester County papers would say that, you know, so-and-so is the best two-way athlete in, in, in South Jersey. And, you know, we'd sit here as coaches and we could, you know, being selfish that we were, because Paul got enough awards on, but we laughed, or, you know, I said, there's no one better two-way. He led South Jersey in 39 touchdowns, and I said, then he has 12 interceptions, and they're talking about kids with four or five interceptions. And uh, like I said, he basically, and you would have to ask other coaches, uh, you know, game plan. I mean, he basically, like Dion, shut down one side of the whole field. Very rarely would teams throw, and when they do, you know, they'd make a mistake and, and pay for it. The hardwood is where Paul really shined. He was South Jersey's leading scorer two years in a row, averaging 34 points a game his senior year, finishing his career with 3,144 points. Only the second person ever in South Jersey to hit the 3,000 mark. The other, Camden's Dewan Wagner, who's now in the NBA. You know, that's real special because I actually got to, uh, he actually came to a couple of my games this year, and I mean, I got to work out with him over the summer, but it was kind of like, I really didn't press for it until I got close enough to where it was in reach, you know, so I really didn't like try to shoot any extra shots or take any extra shots, but when I got close enough, you know what I mean, you kind of feel the pressure to get it since you're that close, you just don't want to forget about it. As Paul's high school career came to a close, it was time to pick a college. So back in November, he gave a verbal commitment to James Madison University. But right as the deadline came to sign a letter of intent, Paul changed his mind. So instead, he'll be playing his basketball career in his home state right here at Seton Hall University. I just believe that, you know, I always told him I keep my options open, you know what I mean? I, at that point in my stage of my life, that's where I wanted to go, you know what I mean? But then I looked at Seton Hall and I was like, I think this would be a better fit, bit, better fit for me, Big East basketball, you know what I mean? I think that's the type of conference now with the new addition of a couple more teams, you know, so, and I, so I, I decided just to go here. Playing all the sports, you know, sometimes you're not really sure what direction you want to go, but I think when he made up his mind about basketball, I think the opportunity to stay local and play in the Big East. Uh, we formed a good relationship. And, you know, I think any time a young man has a chance to stay close to home uh, and play in a great conference like the Big East, you know, no disrespect to James Madison or any other school, I think it's, it's something that they dream about. And for Paul, I think this is a, a dream come true. Now that he is a pirate, Coach Orr says Paul's future has unlimited potential. Oh, he's a bright future, tremendous future on the court and off the court because uh, on the court, uh, his athleticism and his, his upside is huge. I mean, he, he has never really concentrated on one sport. So here he will concentrate on basketball and he's already scoring and shooting deep threes and handling and dribbling the ball and creating plays. But now he'll be able to focus just on basketball and uh, he's going to improve that much more. Though Paul's playing days at Shalik are over, his legacy may be a factor that helps the school for years to come. He just did like so much for us, like I said, and he was such a joy to watch. We had front row seats for the last four years, and maybe the, you know, the best athlete in history is South Jersey. But uh, like I said, the one thing you know, I want the kids to pull from Paul is that drive and is that aggressiveness. Like I said, I tell the kids all the time, you, know, I, you can't expect to dribble like Paul or shoot like Paul or you know, catch like Paul, but you know, there's things you can draw from Paul that you know, he had within himself that can make each one of these kids a better player.